Hello, and welcome to the Geotechnical Engineering Podcast. In this episode of the Geotechnical Engineering Podcast, I'll be talking with Shane tabor a geotechnical geologist at Geo South Africa, and we'll be talking about geological engineering. I'm your host, Jared Green, and this is the Geotechnical Engineering Podcast, a podcast focused on helping geotechnical engineers stay up to date with technical trends in the field. And with that, let's jump right into today's episode. Wow, Shane, welcome to the show, man. How are you doing? Really, really well, Jared. I'm really excited to be here. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for inviting me onto the show. And really, really happy to have met you now virtually. Yeah. But uh, yeah, really cool. Happy to be here. Awesome. Awesome. We're glad to have you on the show today. Uh, really excited. And it'd be great if you could tell our listeners a little bit more about yourself, a little bit about your career journey, and how did you end up in the geotech realm? Cool. So um, I'll try and keep it brief. <laughs> um, I studied geology at Stellenbosch University. Um, I'm currently in Stellenbosch, which is 60, 50, 60 kilometers from Cape Town um, in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And um, Went and did some exploration work, you know, your typical exploration geology, trying to find the next mine, did some ground gravity surveys, soil sampling surveys, managed an XRF lab, some really interesting stuff all the way up in Zambia, um, yes. near Lubumbashi in the DLC. Um, and I, it, it just wasn't for me, something didn't sit right with the mining realm for me. So I then ended up spending some time on a mine called Kulamela, which is an iron ore mine um, in sort of in the interior of South Africa. And they had this really impressive geophone system to monitor the, um, the slopes of the pit or the slopes and the, the mine faces. And that's sort of where I got interested in, in geotech um, and really discovered it. And that was in 2017. And then um, I decided to enroll for a master's in geotechnical engineering at Stellenbosch University as well. And I finished that up earlier this year and I started working for an engineering geologist at the beginning of last year and then Sometime towards the middle of this year, I moved to GEOS, where I'm currently working as a, as a geotech specialist. Excellent. Excellent. That's great. That's great. Uh, a lot of people made moves in this past kind of 12 to 18 months. So it's nice you made a move and it was after getting the master. So congratulations on that. Thanks. Yeah, it was uh, only way to eat an, uh, eat an elephant is one bite at a time. It's... Yeah. it's <laughs> I'm sure you know it's not a yep. it's not an easy thing to do, but it's it a lot of work. Rewarding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. great. And what what do you do on a daily basis at GIOS uh SA? So we um the company was started as a, a groundwater consultancy and we've kind of progressed into more spheres of earth science. So I can be working on anything from um you know a proposals for geotechnical investigations or uh, groundwater exploration work, geophysics for, for groundwater, or um, maybe I'm in the field conducting field work. Uh, otherwise, like today, I've been the whole day in front of my computer uh, putting together a geotechnical investigation report. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's quite variable. Um, and I quite enjoy that. Um, when my when my folks asked me, what do you want to do after school? I was kind of torn between science and engineering and engineering being civil. Um, and I ended up going into science, into geology, but they asked me, what do you want to do? And I sort of gave them that, but I said, 
I just don't want to be inside all the time. <laughs> and <laughs> I just landed like in the perfect place. I'm just super chuffed in the office, in the field. It's a, a good mix of both, as you That's know, awesome. I'm sure. Yeah, you don't put the boots away, no matter where. In yep. the geotech, no matter where you go in your career, you never put the boots away. You know? yeah. <laughs> uh, that's yep. great. Well, for, for we, have, we may have some listeners that are not too familiar with uh, engineering geology. Can you talk a little bit about you know, what that entails and, and what does an engineering geologist do? Like, What kind of work are they doing? How are they looking at projects? So it varies. Um, most often in South Africa, um, we have... Um, a few institutions where you can do a specialization in engineering geology, which is not what I did, but I sort of fulfill that role. Um, and an engineering geologist is typically someone that goes to a site and assesses the soil conditions, um, often prior to any sort of construction and characterizes the engineering properties of the subsoils, uh, looks at the drainage, makes recommendations on, you know, if there's a large drainage feature that the engineers should design an appropriate stormwater system for that or whatever the case may be. It's, it's essentially just highlighting problem areas from an earth science geotechnical perspective um, so that our reports would then get passed to either a geotech engineer, ideally, um, or sometimes it's your sort of standard civil engineer, um, and then he's sort of managing the project. So yeah, it's just to kind of characterize the sites in terms of what's going on in terms of engineering properties and drainage and topography and land use and those sorts of things, highlighting geotechnical risks, I suppose. Got it. And what are some of like the um, local geological challenges that you're seeing? I mean, again, I'm sure it varies across South Africa, but what are, what are yeah. some of the local things you're seeing? Yeah, so down here um, near Cape Town, it's, it's not too bad um, in terms of geotechnical risks. We've got some really steep slopes. Um, I mean, if you Google Table Mountain, which is sort of the postcard from Cape Town, mm -hmm. um, there's some really steep slopes there in some of the built up areas and there have been some pretty intense geotechnical related problems there, um, lateral earth issues um, mm -hmm. with guys digging big foundation uh, or big basement parkings for their houses and that sort of thing and infringing on neighboring properties. And, mm. but other than that, um, we do have some collapsible um, granites, uh, oh. part of the Cape granite suite. And we also have some sometimes quaternary sediments that are, you know, silica sands that are maybe weakly cemented by some calcite or um, calcretized sands, I suppose. And mm -hmm. sometimes on wetting up, those can, can cause some degree of collapse. Okay. Um, but up north near the, um, the capital, Pretoria, Joburg, Gauteng, the sort of business hub of South Africa, there's a lot more, um, they've got a lot more issues, geotechnical issues, expansive soils and there's a little bit of it down here in the western cape where i am expansive mm -hmm. stuff but like very very little there are a few formations um that can cause it but usually it's it's pretty low to like medium expansiveness so it's it's not too challenging um yeah but i think i think the unfortunately i haven't been involved in many of the big um, basement excavations in, in the city. Um, mm -hmm. But I've done a lot of sort of green fields work, if I could call it that, mm -hmm. um, going to new sites where there hasn't been development and characterizing them for new developments. Okay. Um, and in that, 
yeah, it's been either sort of collapsible material or potentially collapsible. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I could probably think of more, but I can't offhand now. Sorry, okay. Jared. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. Sounds like there's a lot of different things you can see. Um, mm. I have to imagine that that makes for a very interesting, you know, career. What would you say mm. is your favorite, favorite, what's the favorite part of your job? I think it's the diversity in, um, in projects and problems that I see. Um, so two weeks ago, I spent some time in what's, it's the interior of South Africa, what we call the Karoo. Mm -hmm. Um also worth a Google. Um, they actually have for a number of years been sort of planning to frack there. We're not sure if it's going to happen. It doesn't look like it, but mm. um, it's a very water stressed area. And I was doing some groundwater exploration work there, which was really interesting going around chatting to farmers, talking about their water resources, doing some field mapping, doing some aerial interpretation of the satellite's imagery, looking at the geo maps, trying to define some targets for drilling. Um, and then earlier this week, I was um, looking at some trial pits and, uh, you know, characterizing soil properties for engineering purposes. Today, I've been in the office working on completely different geology, um, writing a report for another project that I did that's got sort of aeolian windblown sands as opposed to what I was looking at earlier this week which is residual shales and so yeah I think just the diversity and yeah it really it keeps you on your toes and it yeah. keeps things interesting excellent so you're putting that masters to good use <laughs> yeah I, I I believe so I firmly <laughs> believe so yeah Excellent, excellent. Uh, can you think about a specific project you worked on that maybe stood out so far in your career? Yeah, so I mean, I'm I'm still quite a I mean, I'm almost thirty, but uh, I'm okay. still quite a young gun in terms of uh, geotech and, and engineering geology. Mm -hmm. um, I've got about two years work experience full time, so. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't experienced everything there is to experience, but uh, <laughs> my favorite projects have been um, mainly for renewables, actually. There's a lot of renewable developments going on here in South Africa. Um, I don't know if you've heard, probably not, but uh, our sort of centralized power producer, um, they've been struggling with maintenance issues and. So we have what's called load shedding, which is essentially um, our power cuts out for two or three hours in the day sometimes. Wow. Um, so yeah, we've got UPSs here at work to to carry out, keep the internet alive and keep the computers alive. And wow. Yeah, so it's it's quite interesting. We face some really weird and wonderful challenges here in South Africa. It's a beautiful country, but it, it comes with with a bit of baggage, but it makes wow. things interesting. Now the load shedding is that something that's that's regional and predictable, or it's just every now and then it's just whoop, no power it's, or no Wi-Fi. It's 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 yeah, it's variable. Okay. Uh, typically, they can they can manage it. So I mean, often you can we've got just a mobile app, and you can log into the app, and it'll give you no, notifications of you know load shedding's been scheduled, and then you know from eight till ten in the morning, yeah. there's yeah. no power. So you may as well just go to the field if you can or whatever the case may be, you know. Um, wow. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's interesting. Yeah, and what kind of uh, renewable energy is being uh, considered? Predominantly um, wind and solar. So we've got huge solar potential in the interior of South Africa. And interestingly, um, Folks from down here wouldn't think so, but seemingly wind as well in the interior because you, wow. you, you go to the interior of South Africa and, you know, you stand on, let's say, on the roadside and it's mm -hmm. a perfectly still day. But apparently at elevation, there's this like constant wind 
um, and that's wow. really good for for um, the turbines, power production yeah. for the turbines. Yeah. Um, mm. As opposed to down here at the coast, where the winds are a little bit more blustery, and that obviously causes a little bit more of a, a vibration on on the turbines, which which isn't ideal. And then they've got to flutter the blades and and mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. So. Yeah, apparently it's really good. Um, and then another interesting thing that I worked on recently was actually potential geothermal energy down here. We've got a mm. series of faults. We're actually sitting on a on an origin, uh, mm -hmm. like a mountain building event um, mm -hmm. here near Cape Town. And there's a lot of faulting associated with that. And there are a couple of hot, hot springs. And um, yeah, we were looking at doing, potentially doing a, a deep AMT audio magnetic telluric survey to try and determine the subsurface structures and define, you know, how deep they they maybe had to drill to intersect a water, water of a reasonable temperature to set up a geothermal plant. Got it. And how deep do you think you have to go, or are you guys not there yet? So yeah, <laughs> I I am. Um, Yo, let me just do, I actually am not 100% sure what the Rand dollar exchange okay. is at the moment. Okay. Um, but it was, I gave the guy a, an indication of about 40,000 US okay. um, to do the, the work that we wanted to do, you know, mm -hmm. the investigation. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's quite a practical guy. And he said to me, so once I've paid you this 40,000 US mm -hmm. uh, and you've given me, you know, all this information, um, how did he actually put it? It was sort of like, <laughs> when am I going to get it back? Or? Or, or sort of like, how, like, do, do you know where the borehole is? You know, he's like, you've done this proposal and he's like, where's the borehole? Yeah. And then I said, no, 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 it doesn't work like that. You give us this 40,000 US mm -hmm. and we will give you an indication mm -hmm. of a possible depth that you could drill to and yeah. possibly intersect a, like a water body that's of a sufficient temp. And he was like, wow, okay. I think we're going to need to pull in some partners for this. Like yeah. this is a little bit too much for me. <laughs> <laughs> to to sort of pay 40 40,000 US and not even have a borehole yet is yeah was a was a bit ludicrous in his mind but i mean you've got to yeah. do quite a bit of groundwork to figure out what's going on down there before yeah before you can actually start drilling it's true it's true when you think about i mean it, you know sometimes you talk about you know it, it's deep right you have to go very yeah, deep yeah. and you go through the yeah. feasibility it might not work so that's that's exactly. always a challenge there's always that risk there's always yeah. that risk and uh all we can do is collect more information and try and reduce that risk, I suppose. Definitely. Definitely. All right. Great. Well, curious if you have any recommendations for books or resources that would be helpful for geologists in their career. I know as a geotech, I work with a lot of geologists and structural geologists, but uh, any resources come to mind? Again, having just finished your master's, they're probably at the top of your head. <laughs> yeah. So I... Down here, we use a book called the uh, Craig Soil Mechanics. Okay. Um, yeah, that's by R.F. Craig. Mm -hmm. That's quite a great textbook. Um, and then there's also one by Das or Das, D-A-S. Okay. Um, I think that's Principles of Foundation Engineering, okay. something to that effect. But uh, here in South Africa, we've got a few... Um, We've got a few, we, we call them the Bibles. Um, okay. And those are the engineering geology of Southern Africa, which is like a whole, um, you know, there's actually this book. This is quite a, quite a good book as well. Mm -hmm. The Geology of South Africa. Um, okay. Very nice. And then sort of follow-ups to that are the engineering geology of Southern Africa. And someone took all of the formations and rock units in that book, the geology, and then sort of characterized all of those units in terms of their engineering properties and gave like likely soil conditions and, you know, problems that you may encounter. So if you've got a site and you've got to put a proposal together to do some work there, then that's the first reference that you go to. And then 
We've also got another good one, which is uh, your, I don't want to get the book name wrong, mm -hmm. um, but I think it's a Frankie Pyle guide to geotechnical engineering in Southern Africa, which is also a brilliant book on piling and general data collection, mm -hmm. um, at least the methods that we use down here for data collection. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. I'd really love to chat to you after the show and find out, you know, of any resources that you would recommend because I'm yeah, sure they'd sure. be helpful for me. Sure. I mean, so much is, is regionally based. So depending on where you are in the world, we all have our, our collections, right? So that's yeah, good, yeah. but we'll definitely, we'll definitely chat on that. Well, before we take our break, I'd be curious, do you have any advice for, you know, engineers or geologists or geoscientists that, you know, how can they advance in their understanding of geology and geotechnics? What are some things that you would say for advice for them? So, yeah, I mean, I, I I don't have all too much wisdom, but I'll try my <laughs> best, Jared. Um, sure. I we're really big on mentorship down here in 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 South Africa. <laughs> um, you know, typically we'd spend sort of five years under under someone that's really experienced at least five years, shadowing them, going to sites with them they'd review your reports and make sure that, you know, you're on par and you're hitting the mark and you're doing good work and so on. Um, so I think the only thing that I can recommend is get stuck into, if you can, a mentorship program. Mentorship is so crucial. Um, you can only learn so much from reading and going and looking at things, but if someone's guiding you, you just soak all of that up that that, that person's gained. and. Yeah, I, I, for one, am really appreciative of the people that I work with and uh, and get to sort of, they share my, their knowledge with me, which is, it's awesome. Yeah, it's great. I've, I've been um, impressed that, you know, as I talk to more people, even folks that are very, you know, senior in the field, they talk about, you know, you might have 40 years of experience, but they talk about the mentors, the people that kind of took them under their wing and, and, and spent time kind of bringing them up in the field. So I think that, you know, mentorship's definitely one of the most important things that we can do uh, when we're trying to grow our careers and giving back. So I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Wow. So with that, we're going to uh, take a break and we'll come back in just a minute. We're going to close this one out with Shane and our career factor safety in segment. Stick around. All right, welcome back. It's time for our career factor of safety in segment. In geotechnical engineering, just like many disciplines of engineering, it's important to incorporate a factor of safety into your design. But what about incorporating a factor of safety into your career? Today, of course, I'm talking with Shane Tabertik. Shane, you've had a successful career, and I know you're still early in your career, but when you think about what you've been through so far, what's something that you've implemented to give yourself a factor of safety in your career? Thanks, Jared. That's a really cool question. Um, and yeah, as you say, I mean, I'm pretty, pretty uh, early in my career, but I'm going to do my best. Um, I, I think as a, as a young gun, as I mentioned earlier, um, I think the best thing is to just always keep looking up and, and, and striving for better, you know. Uh, I think it's important to have a hunger for knowledge and, uh, and yeah, just keep keep on um, looking for the next step that's going to allow you to grow the most and stretch you and mold you. And um, I mean, it's all really, you know, that sort of sounds in my head like something anyone would say, but I mean, I guess that's what it's all about. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah as, as you sort of mentioned earlier um, while we were chatting before the show, um, I made a move, in my career pretty early and yeah I went back to school as I mentioned earlier as well uh went went to university and I before I sort of that's another thing that I can definitely advise is if you go back to school and you want to go to university and you want to go and do a master's 
have a clear goal in mind. Um, plan it out, set yourself some targets, you know, what do you want to achieve? What sort of knowledge do you want to achieve? Do you want to get theoretical knowledge? Do you want to get practical knowledge? Obviously, I can't really speak for American institutions or foreign institutions. I can speak for at least my own institution, Stellenbosch University. You know, do you want to be hands-on in the laboratory? Do you want to be hands-on in the field? Do you want to develop equations for, I don't know, some sort of hydrological model that's going to tell you a bit more about groundwater flow or forces behind uh, a retaining wall or forces within, I don't know, a drainage system or whatever the case may be, whatever you're interested in. Uh, my recommendation is, you know, be clear about that and try and do some reading before you, uh, before you embark on a master's because I, I sort of jumped into it. I was like, I'm pretty interested in this and you know, I really want to do it um, and I want to contribute to science and engineering. And um, another goal that I set for myself was to go overseas. And I then ended up uh, getting in touch with a professor called Thomas Pabst at Polytechnic Montreal. And I spent four months there doing some research, which was pretty cool nice. uh, on, on geotechnics and geochemistry of of mining waste, which was also sort of in part what my master's was about. Um, so yeah, and that was all awesome experience. I mean, I, I met such amazing people with such incredible knowledge. So in short, you know, keep striving, keep talking to people, um, keep engaging with people and I think reach out. I mean, Jared, I reached out to you when I was sort of debating whether or not I should move from my previous job. Um, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, because I mean, you know, you're a legend and I just thought, let me ask this guy, you know, <laughs> what does he think? Because I was sort of between a rock and a hard place. I had this really great mentor, an absolute legend of a man. Um, but I felt like I was a, sort of a little bit stuck in a rut and I wasn't contributing as much as I could be contributing. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't necessarily taking as much responsibility as I, excuse me, as I figured I, I could have. So I, um, I then decided to uh, look into this move um and then I reached out to you and you gave me really good advice you know you said well if you if you're getting if you're getting stuck in a rut now that's not good I Jared's words I I don't think that's a good idea I'm um, sorry to quote you Jared but I mean <laughs> that, that's not a good a good idea don't do that yeah. um but also you know mentorship's really important and that's when I I uh upon having the interview with my current company, I made sure that we built in to our agreement of my employment that I'd have the ability to consult with other consultants that have a lot of experience that could guide me, give me input. And it, so far it's been fantastic and I've had amazing mentorship um, and I, I'm still on amazing terms with my previous boss. That's also another bit of That's advice great. I can give you is don't burn your bridges. Um, because just today I spoke to my previous boss and asked him about something, you know, I was like, oh, the software, I, uh, you know, I just want to set this up and I want to see if I can use yours as a template to save myself time. And he was like, oh, no problem. Just have a look, log on to any desk or whatever and have a look and, so it, 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 it always uh, pays dividends to, to keep good relationships. And, and uh, yeah, I suppose in closing, uh, we should always just be kinder to one another. You know, you never know what, what's going on in someone else's life. And it's always going to bring you good things if you're kind to people. Excellent. That's great. Well, Shane, thank you so much for coming on and thank you for sharing all the great insights with us, share some great information. I know this advice is going to be helpful for our listeners. 
And uh, on that note, if listeners wanted to find you, what's the best way for them to reach you? Your social media or email? So, yeah, I, I actually, I, I, I threw too much time into the void with social media and like Instagram and stuff. I've still got Instagram, but yeah. I haven't used it for more than a year. It was just taking too much of my time while I was writing up my master's and yeah. doing my lab work. That's another thing that I was doing. I was listening to the geotechnical engineering podcast while I was doing my lab work and it was just getting me so pumped up to, to get everything done and get into the real world. So thanks so much for that. Cool. Um, but uh, LinkedIn is definitely the best place. I think okay. if people want to contact me and yeah, I'm super approachable, like any time of day or night, people are welcome to contact me. I've always got time to chat groundwater, soil and rocks like, <laughs> Bring it on. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> well, Shane, this is great. Keep up the good work and uh, we'll be in touch. All right, man. <laughs> Thanks so much, Jared. I hope you enjoyed the episode today. We would love to hear your feedback, comments, and or questions. Please feel free to go to geotechnicalengineeringpodcast.com where you'll find a summary of the key points discussed in today's episode, that being episode 37, as well as links to any of the resources, websites, or books mentioned during this episode. Until next time, we wish you the very best in all your geotechnical engineering endeavors. Peace.